we're not ISIS, we're not Qaeda, we're not a part of Iran, we're not a part of Hezbollah, we're not a part of the Assad regime. We woke to the sound of a Russian warplane bombing us. My next guest, she has been living in Syria for the past 18 years and her, with her husband and eight children. They live with limited food, medicine, and the sound of constant bombing. Diana Lin is an American citizen by birth and joins me now via Skype from Eastern Ghouta. Diana, thank you so much for joining us. I know it's late into the night there. Thank you. Why did you take this step to make <clears throat> these tapes and to, and to describe your situation to the world? What was your message? What did you want to accomplish? I wanted the voice to be heard because I know there's a lot of uh, Syrian government propaganda that's saying the opposite of what we're saying. I wanted a voice to be heard that we are here a besieged people. We are innocent. We're civilians. We didn't do anything. Uh, not like the state government is saying that there are terrorists here and so forth. Yeah. Describe what a typical day is like for you. <coughs> okay, a typical day. Now we have an uneasy calm, which is uh, making me nervous, actually. Uh, that a typical day is uh, you wake up to shelling if you sleep. Uh, in the daytime, uh, it, we're sitting in the basement. At night, we're sleeping in basements. Uh, basements here, they're, they're not equipped to live in. So we have to go upstairs to cook. We have to go upstairs to use the bathroom. The, so it's running upstairs, running on the stairs, just to live your life, trying to catch up, to feed the children, to use the bathroom. It's become luxurious to take a shower. We're seeing pictures of burned out buildings. I mean, how do you get your food and your water? Yes, and uh, or my family, I'm sorry. And my family and I, we have, uh, we have some stored food. I thank God for that. Others do not. Uh, water, we get it uh, we, by a generator. A generator we pay money for. It's very expensive to get some uh, electricity to, for the well to give us water. So we do have water. Drinking water is hard to find. So we're trying to boil water and drink it right now. What are the chances? Others are not so lucky. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Deanna. Others are not so lucky. They don't have food to store. They don't have stored food. Uh, they don't have enough water. So they're really living hard lives. Yeah. How close is the fighting to your town? The fighting actually is getting closer. Uh, I can hear it. Right now it's quiet, but uh, usually you can hear gunfire or you can hear surface surface missiles really close. And it's really making everyone quite nervous. Okay. And is there, is there any kind, what kind of resistance are Assad forces facing? Of course, the people here, uh, after, the, after the peaceful demonstrations, as you know, in 2011, uh, they they had peaceful demonstrations, and uh, at that time here in the eastern Ghouta, uh, two years passed, and then uh, the area got surrounded, surrounded by Syrian forces. So uh, the people here, they wanted to defend their land like any normal person would. They wanted to defend their land. So they, they formed groups of the Fremont Army to defend their land. So those, those same people who are residents of this area uh, formed groups to fight uh, the Syrian invaders. So those are the people. And those are the your people. people. They include the you. The people who own they're normal people. They're not like uh, the Syrian president, Mustad al-Assad says that they're terrorists or that. No, they're normal people uh, protecting their homes, protecting their families. What are the chances that the Assad forces will capture your town and perhaps your husband and yourself? Well, we hope the chances aren't good, but uh, uh, if you want to look back at history, of course, they took over because no one is trying to stop them. Russia is helping them. Russia has uh, major artillery, major warplanes. Uh, I can, when I hear them or when they, they bomb us, it's 
a lot different from the Syrian warplanes. It's a lot louder. Uh, it's a lot more destructive. So they they've gave them an upper hand actually. And uh, Russia too says they're fighting terrorists when they're only killing women, children, families, kicking people out of their own lands. Why not leave as part of the humanitarian corridor? First of all, if you want to leave, it's not safe. If you look at the pictures, I don't see people smiling. They're going to someplace good. I saw their pictures. I saw fear in their eyes. You're going to the Syrian, the Syrian police, the Syrian secret police. It's not safe. Like, like I heard in your report, uh, they use military tactics. Their military tactics uh, is torture. It's rape. Everyone knows it here. That's why they fear them. They, ha they have no hearts. They have no mercy. So the criminals. So, but if it's a choice between, help me understand, if it's a choice between taking the chance of leaving or staying in your community, uh, so many others have done it. Uh, does it ever cross your mind? When they want someone to evacuate the area, they bomb it severely, like they did in Hamoria. Uh, I saw on the news thousands of people leaving because actually they bombed them to death. All the buildings were collapsed. They're in the basements. When it was a little bit quiet, people started coming out. Uh, the Syrian army forces them to go with them. Uh, so uh, to evacuate. But I've seen the pictures. The people, they're not happy. And uh, it's fear in my heart that that will happen to us. I've, I've spoken about the president. That's a big no-no. He's You can't say anything about him. He, he will take me. They will kill me. It's not safe whatsoever. There's a lot of uh, young men here who are activists who speak about the oppression that he's get, that he's done to everyone. They, they're all they're all have a, an X on them. They're on their they are all on his blacklist. So you don't believe that you or others would make it safely, perhaps even your husband as well or <laughs> your children would make it safely out. No, I don't believe that. I know I know I wouldn't. How do you know? If he knows it's me. Oh, oh. The secret police know that it's me. Uh, I, we wouldn't make it out. That's 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 something I have no doubt about. They know that it's you. What doing? What? They know that it's me. I'm talking about the, their government that they think is perfect, and no one should say a word about. People of Syria live in fear. Even people in Damascus, they don't talk about the president. They can't say one word about him. Uh, uh, they're scared to say something good because they might take it the wrong way. That everyone lives in fear here. You can't believe the government, state, the media that they're, or propaganda that they they give out. It's it's completely the opposite. Deanna, some of the experts and observers that I've talked to recently believe the world is going to let Assad stay in power because there is a preference for some sort of stability right now. Has Assad won? What's your reaction to that? Uh, I don't uh, think they call it, they should call it stability, stability, that he's a tyrant and he's oppressing his people and he treats them like sheep. If anyone raises their head, they get slaughtered. This is this shouldn't be called stability. And what does America and the free world, they all call for? They call for freedom, freedom of speech. Is that just for them or for all people? Does the human stop at America or Europe? Or is a human a human wherever he is? Under what circumstances would you leave Syria? If I'm forced to leave, I'm going to have to leave, of course. Under those circumstances, how do they force people to leave? They bombard the city uh, like they're doing now. No, no medicine is being let in at all. There's some food being let in, uh, small amounts, but medicine is, has completely been prohibited uh, to come in. It's been like that for months. A lot of mes medicine doesn't exist. Diabetes medicine, hypertension medicine, cancer medicine, all this does not exist here. So they're slowly trying to kill us. They're trying to scare us to starve us, to bomb us, and to make us surrender, or to evacuate us after our houses have fallen to the ground, because we will become homeless. So that's the idea, that's the plan. Can you see more oppression than this? 
What's your message? What's your request to anybody who's watching this now? I know most of the world doesn't know much about the Eastern Ghouta, and I wish that would change. I wish people, I know people, they have good hearts. I don't think they believe that, that a human isn't a human, according to his nationality or his color of skin. I think we're all humans. We all want the same thing. We want to live. We want to be happy. We want to raise our children. This is what we want. I, I would tell them, do something. Let your voice be heard. Tell them you know the, there is a besieged people in the Eastern Ghouta. Make your voice heard. Do a demonstration. Put pressure on the Russian embassy. What does Russia want with us? Put pressure on the United States. Put pressure on the UN made a ceasefire plan, which didn't work. Why didn't it work? Because of Russia. Why does Russia have so much power? This is a, a big country. When you're, you're quiet to one tyrant, won't you be worried that another tyrant will take control? Maybe a stronger one? Deanna Lynn, thank you so much for sharing your story tonight. Thank you.